It's Ann over at Plan Obsessed. And uh, if you can tell, I'm wearing a sweatshirt now. It's only 55 degrees Fahrenheit here today. And uh, I don't have my thermometer in the basement yet, but it's probably 60 something. So we're going to take a look in on the DIY bin today and see what's going on. Now we, re we harvested this top level and remade it and fed it with melon. So not that it's that kind of time of year, but we could grow a whole lot of melon. The worms could grow a whole lot of melon. Look at that. They just love that. So let's see, aside from the sprouts, what we have here in the new feeding zone. I think we fed right down the middle, according to my notes. Now it's been, uh, it's not been two weeks, but it's been more than one. I don't know if we're going to find a worm ball, but here's the skin of the melon. Maybe? Let's see. Well, they've, they've made off with everything, and we're not going to get a worm ball, apparently, on this level, anyway. Huh. Well, let's flip the whole thing over. Keep the moisture even on this level. Make sure that everything is, is doing good. So the only thing they've got left on this level appears to be the uh, the sprouts. So we'll stick those underneath so they can degrade and the worms can have that to eat. All right, I'm going to take off this level and the level below this, I think, might be ready for harvest. We fed melon at the end and hopefully we've got the worms moving over to this end. So let me get this moved off. All right, well, let's see. We've got our sprouts over here in the corner, so we definitely know that the sprouts are where the food is. So let's see if we haven't managed to get a worm ball down at this end. Not a proper worm ball, but it looks like they have also taken care of all of that melon in a little over a week. But I think I am going to grab like a handful here and move it to the top because we're going to um, harvest out this castings and I did put new bedding down here and that doesn't need to go with the uh, the harvest. So I'm going to try and pick out as much as I can of large things before I put this in a concrete tray and uh, a concrete mixing tray and let it dry. You can tell it is very wet. So kind of just flipping through here, picking up any bigger food that might have been left over from a previous feeding. I think we did have corn in here once upon a time, so of course that's gonna that's gonna be around for months. And then we had tomatoes left over from canning, and I think the the peels of the tomato are just not super tasty, and then they they just take forever to break down. So just kind of flipping through here and getting out any of the big big things that we don't need in our drying tray. Okay, let me grab that tray. I'm going to just, since this is not really pourable, I'm just going to pick it up and move it. It's also not dry enough to really do a light migration on this either, so it's going to take me a couple of days, maybe even a week, to get that to dry out enough in there to uh, do a migration on it. I was kind of hoping to have a better, like, horizontal migration with that melon, but I didn't get here in time apparently for that. So, pull out most of everything here, and then let's restart this side, or this level of the bin. This is my prepared bedding that's been waiting for about a month, at least three weeks. I don't know if it's a whole month. All right, and then let's get them some food. I think I've got cabbage and all kinds of things in here. So 
It'll get a good feeding. Spread that out. They've got a, they had enormous mangoes at the store a week or so ago. All right. Well, we'll get that covered up a little bit. And then we will look and see what the bottom is doing. All right, this is also super done. I think I'm going to pull this out too. Super wet, super done. Just going to grab out the large amounts of the large food like the corn and stuff and move that over. And then uh, since this is so wet, I am just going to also move this to the the top layer. Here in about a month I will be whining about it being too dry as soon as that furnace kicks in. But let's get this out and moved into the tray with the others. I will have you take a look at that soon as we get done here. And you can see how much I've got in the tray drying out. Okay, I'm just going to put some paper down here. Maybe put the corn back down here. Give them something to work on when they get down here. And uh, let me reassemble this. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see the edge here. It does kind of, when it gets super wet, it just creeps up the edge. I'm sure the professional stacking systems don't have that problem. <laughs> All right, let's reassemble. And as anybody who's had a stack system similar to this, maybe not a professional one, but a system like this, when I unstack them, the worms do end up on the table and then I have to, to go by and rescue them and put them back in. But all's all well that ends well here. Um, so we now have all three layers refreshed on the DIY bin. Let me move this over and I will let you have a look and see what we've got now in our drying tray. I do have a fan on in the basement that will hopefully help this. This currently weighs about 50 pounds. But hopefully, I'm going to pick out some of the, the food here, but hopefully with the fan, this peanut butter will uh, dry out pretty good, and uh, I can start harvesting this, you know, in a little while. But the castings look pretty good. If you notice, they're, pretty, they're light in color, and the castings are light in color when you feed mostly paper bedding. They are almost black when you feed leaves. So that, I'm not sure if that has a nutrient content difference or not, but I do notice a, a physical difference. Um, my plants don't seem to behave any different either way when they're fed it, but there is some research to say that um, certain feedstocks produce higher nutrients. Um, if you look in the Amazon links below, there's a uh, vermiculture and technology book. It's an ebook you can read that will talk some of uh, through some of that. It's in the Amazon link if you wanted to download that. Um, you know, it's a purchase. But it does help out. I mean, I get like a penny or two out of it. But it doesn't cost you anything more if you do. And that is probably one of my favorite books. It's a bunch of different papers um, by scientific people. And I guess I value that they've done actual research. But anyway, that is it for the DIY stack bin today. If you liked the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. Pretty muddy today. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.